Hello, we're here with Judge Michael Ryan, who's uh, running uh, for re-election to King County Superior Court position number 37. Would you like to go ahead with a two-minute introduction? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Mike Ryan, and I'm uh, running for re-election uh, to Department 37 of the King County Superior Court. I want to first thank you all for being here. Um, I understand these are crazy times. Um, and it's difficult for everyone to, to get together, but it's, it's heartening to see people are using technology in a way um, that brings people together during these times. Um, I was appointed last year by uh, Governor Inslee to a spot on the King County Superior Court, and I've been in that position now for a little over a year. Um, and so far the job has been, it's been deeply rewarding, uh, it's been enriching, and it can be very difficult at times, um, but I really do love the work that I'm doing. Um, before I was appointed by Governor Inslee to the bench, I worked at a large Seattle law firm, Kano Gates, and I was a partner there. I left uh, Kano Gates to join the city attorney's office, the Seattle city attorney's office, where I worked on a lot of really interesting issues. I was one of the lead lawyers in the Sanctuary City lawsuit um, against the Trump administration. I was the lead lawyer on the Democracy Vouchers Program, which our Supreme Court recently upheld. And I was the lead lawyer in uh, defending the initiative regarding uh, hotel workers and those rights uh, here in the city of Seattle. Um, so I did a lot of really interesting work uh, that was very rewarding as well uh, at the city attorney's office. But like I said, I'm uh, now in the Superior Court. Um, I'm down in Kent. Uh, where I have a mixed um, docket, where I do both criminal and civil cases. Um, things have been a little bit different lately uh, with the courts as a result of everything that's going on, but the courts are committed to uh, equal access to justice, even under these trying times. Um, so uh, I just really want to thank everyone for being here and um, happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. Um, now we'll move into the prepared questions and Robert's going to place those into the chat box. Um, there are four of them and those will be two minutes apiece in the responses um, and we'll go in order. So uh, let's see here. Robert, you actually have question one. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, question one, what are the pros and cons of going to the bench as compared to practicing laws you just described? Well, I think there are a couple. I mean, the pros, um, the work is, uh, it's very challenging on this period court. Uh, it's intellectually stimulating. No day is uh, the same as the day before it. And oftentimes the day never ends the way you thought it would when it started, um, which makes the job uh, very interesting um, and challenging. Um, to me, I always enjoyed um, the intellectual rigor of the law. And being a judge, um, you, you get faced with that every day. You see the human experience before you in the courtroom every single day, and you, you realize how uh, impactful the decisions that you make on a daily basis are in people's lives and the immediate impact that your decisions have. Um, as to the cons of going to the bench, I mean, I, I don't. I don't want to go back to private practice, but one, one of the cons is um, you, you, don't, you don't have necessarily the same support you might have in private practice. When I was at a large law firm, I had uh, people that I worked with um, who would help do my work for me and with me. Um, you don't have that same level of support. Now, we have some of the most dedicated uh, employees who are court staff, my bailiff, the clerks, and everyone who makes the court function, seconds. but it's not the same as if you were in a private law firm where someone can do the research for you um, and things like that. Um, obviously, to some extent, it can be more lucrative in the private sector, um, depending on the type of work that you're doing, um, but that is a con Ten seconds. in a very minimal way. I, I think it's clearly outweighed by the value of the work that I get to do every day for the public. Thank you. Uh, question two, Sherry. Hi. Um, what have been the most effective methods for improving court procedures and efficiency? 
and what other methods would you suggest? Well, I, I think this is a really interesting question to ask, particularly at this time, because the courts are faced with a unique challenge of staying open uh, in an era where we have to keep people socially distant. And that's not commonplace for us. Um, so I think the court has um, begun to adapt um, new methods by which um, to make things more effective and more accessible for people, even in this time. You know, the court is looking, doing a lot of telephonic hearings that we maybe wouldn't have done before. Uh, we're looking into having video uh, hearings. I had a hearing the other day on Skype for the first time where all the lawyers were in my courtroom virtually. Um, and that was um, really interesting because I think if we are able to expand on those uh, in the future, we're going to create more access to justice and more opportunity for people to come into the courthouse. Um, because I think for a lot of people coming into a courthouse can be a fairly daunting thing. And if we can break down some of those barriers and allow people to see the, how the process works uh, through video or phone uh, hearings, I think that um, improves the access and improves, and improves our uh, procedures and frankly, our efficiency as well. Um, one thing that this has done, we've become less reliant on paper than we've ever been before. We don't want people shuffling papers because of concerns for health and safety. 30 seconds. And so we've become more reliant on our electronic document system. Uh, we're reducing barriers for people to file documents electronically without some of the costs that are normally associated with it. And I think we can build upon those things. Uh, and in the end, we will become more efficient um, through our procedures just as a result of some of the lessons we're learning right now in this challenging time. Great, thank you. Uh, question three uh, would go to Jason. Let's see if he's, did he accidentally drop off? Oh, Jason, you might be on mute. Uh, uh, which question again? Question three, please. Uh, as a judge, what would you consider your greatest strength and weakness? Well, I think in terms of uh, strength, um, I, I feel as though I'm someone who tries to tackle every problem, tries to look at it from every single angle. And I think that's important to do, uh, because a judge has to be neutral, um, but a judge also has to be willing to work hard and deeply study the law and the facts of a particular case to figure out how they apply. Um, and I think that one of my strengths is that I um, have that work ethic, but I also have that uh, intellectual curiosity that, uh, which is one of the reasons why this job is so rewarding is because you get that opportunity uh, to kind of play off your strengths uh, when you're trying to uh, solve a problem and make a decision. Um, in terms of uh, weaknesses, um, I think my first year on the bench, I learned a lot about myself more than I did about the law. Um, I would say I'm probably a very different judge than I was when I started a year ago. Uh, it's part of what you develop over time. And in terms of weaknesses, um, I, when I first started out, I, I maybe wasn't as patient as I should be with some of uh, the lawyers. I didn't understand necessarily the strain they were under um, in the work that they had to do. And um, so, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, essentially soften those edges, if you will, because um, I understand each day I, after court ends, after I have a hearing, I go back into my chambers and I take five, 10 minutes seconds. to reflect on how things went because um, I want to constantly improve to become the best judge that I can be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question four, Mackenzie. Sure, thanks. Uh, describe your most difficult case why was it difficult and how did you handle it? All right, I, I'll, I don't think I can refer to a specific case per se as a judge uh, because a lot of the cases I've worked on, uh, given how new I am, are still uh, in the appellate pipeline. So it's not necessarily appropriate to talk about specific case, but I can talk to you about situations that I have dealt with um, that I find to be very difficult. Um, one thing that we do a lot of uh, in the Superior Court um, is sentencing defendants. And that is 
the hardest thing that I think a court has to do, um, or one of the hardest things a court has to do, because you're taking someone's liberty away. You're in a situation where all the facts have been brought before you. Maybe there's been a jury trial, and the jury has heard all the evidence, and the jury has made that decision, and you have to determine what the punishment is. And that sentence in hearing can be very uh, difficult because you have victims come in who talk about their experiences and what they'd like to see in terms of a sentence. You have the defendant who allocutes, who explains, um, says they're sorry, and explains what happened. Uh, you have the defendant's family there uh, pleading for a more lenient sentence. Um, so those are really difficult decisions we have to make. Um, because we're trying to balance all of these competing interests. Um, you know, the society's interest in making sure that, that there is a punishment uh, when a crime is committed, but also trying to balance them uh, uh, with trying to do the sentence that's most just and correct. And the legislature set out uh, guides for us through the Sentencing Reform Act that sometimes are a little bit more strict than maybe you'd want them to be. Um, but that being said, I think sentencing um, are a really difficult part of what we do on the Superior Court. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to open it up to follow up questions. And these are a, a one minute response time. Um, so folks, if you have a question, please raise your uh, hand using the button or message me in the message box. All right. Sometimes it takes a little while. I'll ask one while we're waiting. Um, what uh, jobs or interests or volunteer activities did you um, uh, participate in in uh, college or law school? Sure. Um, well, when I was in college, I um, was a uh, I ran cross country and track and field um, at Rutgers. I was a walk on. Um, but I made varsity uh, my freshman year in cross country and then thereafter in track and fields. So I was a four year uh, letter winner in cross country as a walk on. So running was very important to me. Um, so that was one of the activities I really uh, enjoyed doing. Um, I also held down a, a job while I was in, uh, I was work study when I was in college. So I had a pretty busy college life with traveling for cross country as well as a job and then doing my studies as well. Um, in law school, uh, my first year, I actually worked during the day and went to school at night at Georgetown uh, University in DC. So again, it was quite busy. Uh, but when seconds. I was at the Law Center, I was on the journal. And finally, the birds behind me, uh, I was the chair of the Washington Audubon for several years before going on to the bench. So these, so that's what the birds reflect is my love of, of birds. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jeff? Uh, thank you. So um, the uh, the court system and the uh, you know, the judicial system broadly is uh, quite underfunded. And I'm wondering how would you advocate for more funding for the judicial system um, going forward? Well, I think the one thing we can do is um, show people why why we need to be funded. Um, exp explain to them why we need a separate funding arm, um, why we need to be fully funded because of the essential work that we do. I mean, again, I'll go back to where we are today. I mean, we're still open. We still have to serve people's needs. You know, we, we go in and we're working every day and our staff is working every day uh, under these difficult conditions because people still need protection orders. Uh, children still need um, to be uh, addressed in dependencies. Um, so we do a lot of really important work. And the more we're funded, 10 seconds. Uh, the we are of doing that work. Um, and, and I think if we can prove ourselves to be more efficient, we can show that we're good with the money as well. Um, so I think this is looking up, I hope, for better funding. Great, thank you. Uh, Laura. Hi, Judge Ryan. 
Are there any uh, particular rotations at the Superior Court that you're interested in pursuing? Well, yes. I mean, um, well, we county we do multiple. Everyone kind of does a. Um, everyone in the first five years, the plan is now everyone is kind of doing. Uh, so perhaps family law, dependency, uh, denial, or ITA involuntary treatment act, uh, our court that we have up in Harborview. Um, but I, you know, for me, where I came from with a largely civil background, uh, the Seattle civil rotation is the one that might be the most interest to me um, because that is where I think a lot of the complex civil cases come into play. But I will say, having had no experience with criminal law. Uh, down in Kent, we get very complex criminal cases, and I found it absolutely fascinating uh, to work on those issues. So I guess that would be one rotation I'm looking forward to, but then again, I enjoy all the different rotations because of the ability to uh, learn new areas of the law and apply those areas of the law. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any further questions? Any further questions? I have one. Um, what do you perceive as uh, the greatest obstacle to justice? I think the greatest obstacle to justice is often um, access to um, attorneys. I mean, I'm thinking particularly in, in the civil side, of things. Um, there are a lot of people with a lot of valid claims who simply can't afford an attorney. Now, in the criminal context, you get, you do get appointed representation. Um, but I, I think that that's a major access to justice issue is that we don't have some form of program in place to provide uh, civil litigants with, um, uh, with counsel. Now, when I've worked at k l Gates, I did a lot of pro bono work. When I was with the city of Seattle, I tried to figure out a way that we could possibly uh, do pro bono Ten work seconds. without running afoul of issues with using government funds for non-government purposes. So I think that's a major access to justice issue is just the cost of an attorney and the cost of litigation. Great, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? All right, hearing none, let me just scroll through real fast. All right, and seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead and ask you to give a, a one minute wrap up. All right, well, first off, thank you all for being here. Um, I know this are difficult times for everyone and I really do appreciate uh, the work that you're doing. Um, second, I want to say when the governor appointed me last year, I, I think he put a lot of faith in me and my ability uh, to be a, a productive member of the King County Superior Court. And, um, and I wanna uh, essentially reward that faith that if I do draw a challenger this year, I'm gonna run a strong campaign and I would ask for uh, your support. Uh, I wanna thank you for your support last year and I would also ask the voters uh, for their support um, because I really do enjoy the work that I'm doing and I wanna keep doing it and I know I'm gonna grow in the job and become better each day. And uh, just want to thank all of you uh, for allowing me to speak with you. Great, thank you.